The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas for IBM Impact. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm joined with Paul Gillen, my co-host. Uh, our next guest is Kristen Loria, Vice President of Marketing for IBM Mobile. First, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to have you on. Um, a lot of activity in mobile. We talked about security, big data. We talked about streaming with the social data. We talked about a lot of things, but mobile's on the, on the hot list uh, with Blue Mix and cloud. Cloud and mobile are really going hand Absolutely. in glove. So, so give us your take on, on the mobile first. Because some are saying it's not mobile first anymore, it's cloud first. Is it cloud first or mobile first? I think it's sort of a chicken and egg conversation, really. Um, cloud and mobile go hand in hand. Whether the workload is driving the infrastructure and how you get there, you can't do it uh, either way, right? You have to have them both together. You need, cloud, mobile is driving new forms of engagement in the marketplace, and at the same time, it's you got to reach everybody, anywhere, anytime. Uh, with the right offerings, and we talked about the iterative life cycle and how fast the speed of change, change is happening. I don't know how you get there without the cloud. So mobile right. developers are kind of fickle, and you talk to them, they're all consumer guys, consumer, but with bring your own device to work on the iPad, the iPad has kind of woke up the enterprise and the C-level saying, I want my app on this. And that kind of spawned this movement of saying, we got to have mobile for the enterprise. Um, and, and so how do you talk to customers and what do you, what do you, how do you split the differences and how do you reconcile, oh, consumer app, consumer for the enterprise, because that's a hot area right now. Yeah, I think when you talk to enterprise clients, it's really about um, four areas that we talk about. Uh, how do you better engage with your marketplace? How do you uh, build out a platform that is actually going to uh, deliver front screen apps that actually deliver a, an ROI? Um, on the flip side, how do you protect? How do you protect at all layers of the organization, whether it's your data, whether it's um, the, the device, whether it's the application? And then, of course, talking to the enterprise versus talking to consumer apps is really about um, process transformation and rethinking the way that you go to market. So the enterprise is slightly different because you've got to think through the business processes, how do you reach, new, reach more people and serve more markets. Uh, Kristen, there's no doubt that IBM is going to be strong in the enterprise, but how about the new class of so-called collaboration economy companies, like Uber, like Airbnb, like the, like the uh, a whole host of companies that are, are born in the cloud and where mobility is, is part of the service, is a central part of the service. What are you going to do to reach those companies? Uh, we launched our Bluemix platform, um, and I think that, and the cloud marketplace, and those uh, companies are going to be able to interact with us through those means. Um, so absolutely, I think that's part of the play. Um, so it's not just reaching the large enterprise clients, but how do we uh, help them offer services on our platform, and how do we integrate their services into what so we do. So is Bluemix really the leading, uh, the leader for mobile first, or are you nope. leading with mobile first? So this week you heard us announce uh, a total mobile first application development portfolio, and there's three layers of that portfolio. There is the Worklight platform, there are the Bluemix services, as well as our place around Clouded. Um, so Bluemix, whether you're a cloud developer, whether you're doing mobile in the cloud, or whether you're doing it on-prem, or a combination of both, the mobile first portfolio is going to uh, have the totality of that. And how about software? Where does that fit in the stack? Software is part of the cloud play, um, so we will also make many of our software offerings available on software. Right, work light on software, so it's part of the stack. So again, you started out with, do, does it cloud or is it mobile? They go hand in hand. And any client that's going to engage with us is going to need both the host of mobile and cloud. Are you, are you, are you guys coordinating the developer outreach efforts? Because that's a hot area. I mean, right now, <laughs> Kid Developers yeah. is a, I, a contested yeah. part of the marketplace. Everyone wants to win the developers. Yeah. Um, and it's hard. It's hard to win the developers. I think it's hard to win the developers, but because we use words like developers. And I think developers are, are people, and we're starting to understand what is the segmentation of the different developers. But it is, they're pe developers are people, right? Yeah. You got to reach the developer as a human being, as a person. Um, you're going to see a lot of coordination in this space. Uh, we do uh, understand, though, that the services that are being pulled on Bluemix, the hot services that are out there right now, are the mobile services. So I do believe the combination of the mobile play and the Bluemix developer are absolutely going to go hand in hand. Um, yeah, I, I think 
developers are are the key to success. Developers but are we, people. Hey, developers, devel you're yeah. you're a human being. We keep too. saying developers, and I think we need to start talking about what well, it, what is going to well, change. Let's talk about this. the psychology of a developer, right? So you know, they're, they are they they have natural hierarchy of needs. My wife was sharing something on Facebook that had Maslow's hierarchy of needs in the bottom. It said before you know the physical. It says Wi-Fi, um, which was kind of a, a geek joke. But but the developers want they want validation. It's kind of artistic in the sense their work. They want validation around their peers. Certainly open source makes it much more community based. But they want distribution. They want to make some sort of value, whether it's for non-profit or for profit. They got to have them that, that, that marketplace, if you will. That's how your marketplace, but like, they got to see the fruits of their labor have a distribution. So what, do you see that too? And what are you guys doing to help that? Yeah, I think absolutely. Um, how we make the developers successful in the industries that are there now are going to be the winning plays. Um, we are working on programs now uh, to understand that, but I think the thing that IBM can offer is um, portfolios of capabilities that are absolutely suited for the enterprise, suited for what they need to do. Um, will help developers in the mobile space develop front screen apps that actually deliver ROI. So, um, yeah, we see the same thing, and that is uh, what we're working on right now. Are, are you considering something like an Intel Inside type of campaign where mobile developers would, would, be, uh, uh, would be branding their apps with, uh, with uh, 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 Bluemix or, or uh, with, with the IBM brand? Right now I'm going to answer that in terms of we have our Made With IBM campaign, um, not quite Intel Inside from a branding perspective, but yeah, absolutely, we want developers out there understanding uh, you know, and, and talking about what they have brought to market through Made With IBM, or through IBM, um, and you will see the developer is a key component of that Made With IBM campaign. Uh, IBM, uh, Made With IBM is sort of an overarching campaign, though. Are you looking at something more specifically to the mobile market? We are looking at something more specific to the developer market, um, and how do we pull that thought process, not an advertising campaign, campaign per se, but how do you pull that made with IBM forward for the developers to leverage? So, and, and mobile is already a part of the made with IBM campaign. So. What do you think about the, um, being, I like this developers people, I want to riff on that a little bit further, on the, um, the Smarter Planet campaign, which we're talking to Dave about at the Masters Golf Tournament, really about highlighting people, right? Yep. You mentioned segmentation. How do you look at that as a marketer? Okay, I mean segmentation certainly has traditional practices, but now with the internet, we were just talking about some big data techniques. Um, digital marketing is a big part of this because they're all on GitHub, they're all online, they're all on Hacker News, they're all over the place, they're in forums, so there, there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer communications going on in the developer community. Um, how do you segment the market? I mean, how do you take a, how do you approach yeah, that? I think the market segmentation is shifting from more of a traditional approach on uh, even age or where people work to really um, how do people make decisions. And that's where I think uh, looking at the developer community and understanding uh, them as, as a people, or riff on, riff on people. Um, it's really understanding yeah. how a developer makes decisions, what is important to the developer. Um, we talked about getting uh, a developer might start out with one tool. What makes a, a developer, what makes people make the next decision for the next tool? So I think the segmentation is shifting more from uh, how do you make decisions, how do you, uh, how do you uh, segment by age, um, you know, different groups and corporate structures to what are we trying to get done and why do you do what you do? Talk a little bit about what you're working on right now. Obviously, mobile is an area that's crowded but growing. It's got the thermal, as we say in the markets, is creating massive opportunities and growth. We're still kind of in the build-out phase, but people are still growing within that. Um, what, what are some of the things you're working on that you can share? Yeah, so uh, it's really about uh, the totality of capabilities, but understanding the entry points and how clients are getting started. We are seeing the breadth of our mobile portfolio being picked up in every different industry, right? You saw many of the different clients on stage, um, healthcare, uh, retail, financial services. So where we're really thinking about now is how do we bring that portfolio together in a way that it's simple to consume for the enterprise, but also working through a whole set of skills and services to say where do clients want to get started and what are those patterns of adoption in the marketplace. Bob Picciano had a great line on, on my notes here. He said, 80% um, of, the, of the data is unstructured, not always tied to business outcomes. This is senior vice president, so you know, business outcomes is always like coming out of his mouth. So, but he said, interesting, data, the key to data is automation, pushing it into the application. Mobile data is a big part of that. You have geolocation data, you have all kinds of innovations around data. How do you guys uh, weave that into the storyline, into the product portfolio? 
Yeah, absolutely. The um, the analytics are absolutely a part of the the play in terms of developing the application itself. And you saw some of the data, the, the, the analytics and sediment analysis go right back into the app uh, with Marie and Mike Gilfix on stage yesterday. Um, but sediment analysis in general in the marketplace and understanding the um, the experience of your your uh, marketplace, your users, whoever it may be, um, it's absolutely one of the key differentiators. When we talk about our point of view in mobile, what IBM brings to the table is really around how do you secure the transactions, not just about information sharing, but you got to get the transacting layer. Um, the second piece is what we heard a lot about in the past couple days around the, uh, the approach to development and operations being very iter iterative and very fast. And then on the third piece, it's really leveraging analytics back into the platform to be able to adjust and adjust real time in terms of that life cycle. So. Maribel Lopez was on theCUBE yesterday and she had an interesting quote. She said she thinks that internal mobile applications are actually funding external mobile applications. In other words, the ROI is really coming from the internal stuff right now. Are you seeing that? I think we're seeing a mix of both, um, and I think we're seeing increasingly more uh, applications on, uh, more entry points on the external side. Um, the internal side, absolutely, people are working that, um, and I think we saw this a lot in um, other shifts in the marketplace, but how you engage differently with your marketplace and your uh, consumers, your clients, I think that it's 50-50 it's right now. I don't think it's one driving the other. What are your developers asking you about embedded devices, about going beyond the, 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 the phone and the tablet? Uh, yeah, are, are they very seriously looking at whether it's Google Glass or whether it's, uh, whether it's Fitbit or whether it's something more, uh, uh, more uh, focused, uh, application specific? Yeah, I, I think the, the market for the Internet of Things and other types of devices is absolutely just starting to hit us now, but I think that's all about um, understanding the data from the different devices. Um, the smartphone is, an, is one form factor, but I think that's changing over the long term. So it really is understanding all the different connected devices in the marketplace. How do you bring that together into an application um, that anybody will be able to leverage inside your organization? So, so I got to ask, are you guys coming out with an IBM phone? No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I, I couldn't help but resist. Well, Microsoft just closed Nokia, right? So this is a method yeah. to the madness so, and the question. Uh, you know, last year you know, we went to market saying, yeah. you know, it's not about the device, it's about the data between them. <laughs> of course, if, there, if you're going to make a phone, I, that might not be your call, it might be uh, you know, the powers that be, Ginny. But, no, but more seriously, Microsoft has Nokia, and they're in an innovator's dilemma right now because they have a cloud strategy, they have also the legacy software business tied to the desktop, but you have uh, Azure trying to be a cloud player, and they have their own phone. So can you be pure phone player and win the cloud, or do you win the cloud and support all the phones out there? You win That's the cloud and you support all those all the devices out there. Um, I think the, the form factor changes over time, so do the operating systems, and I think the winning play is to support. How okay, so, so the strategy on the developer front, the guy, guy would agree. Yeah, no. I think pretty obvious. <laughs> you go to business school and you can learn that. Um, um, the um, soft, but the strategy to support a lot of these frameworks out there are challenging. So how do you deal with versioning control? Is that part of Bluemix's role? Was that does that does that go into the front end of the cloud or I mean the phone? How do you manage the, all the different the versioning control? Yeah. I think that's absolutely part of the Worklight platform. Um, and we're offering the Worklight platform as an on-prem solution, solution and you're also going to see uh, different services from Worklight in the cloud as well. So that is uh, one of the key differentiators of the Worklight platform. How about internal IBM applications? Your, your Lotus Notes, your, your Cognos, uh, your suite of marketing apps. What are you doing to make those proof of concept for excellence in mobility? We absolutely have efforts underway. All of our um, SaaS portfolio is we're offering through uh, mobile applications as well. And any applications that we're developing, we're developing them on our platform inside of IBM as well. So. And, and what, will you have any marketing programs around those applications to showcase their capabilities? Absolutely. Excellence and, absolutely. And we will be bringing those forward. Okay, we have some questions from the crowd chat out there. Obviously, uh, thanks for sending them in. Every, every interview pretty much had some questions. Um, so the question is uh, to you, Kristen, how is mobile first, hashtag, good job, Bert, and Blue Mix, hashtag, Blue Mix, supporting Watsons on the mobile contest? Do you see Watson playing into the mobile experience? Yeah, so at Mobile World Congress, we announced the Watson Mobile Developer Challenge, and I think uh, everybody heard Mike Roden on stage. We have 400, uh, uh, final, we had four peop 400 people submit concepts uh, that were mobile applications that were written with calls back to Watson and we're going to be uh, developing that over the next few months and announcing winners soon. So and what's the number? Can you share some stats again? What was it on the in total? It was 100,000 um, people had viewed the challenge uh, and about 400 actual concepts were actually put out there. So That's crowdsourcing R&D right there. Crowdsourcing and then uh, 25 yeah. semi-finalists. So social business has been a big part of IBM's um, uh, theme, 
how does social business come in with the mobile? Obviously mobile's real time, you're moving around with it, but people also have iPads and phones and desktops, so like the, the an internet of things is out there too, so is that part of mobile? Do you look at mobile as all the edge devices at this point, or are you strictly focused on the phone? Uh, we are not strictly focused on the phone. Um, the phone right now is a means uh, out there, but in terms of uh, hospital settings, there are all sorts of mobile devices that are not a phone. Just Internet of Things, basically. Right. Is it is the Internet of Things. They are absolutely related. Um, the phone is a personal access point to reach clients in certain industries uh, for your employees, but in other industries, there are many other mobile devices. Mobile First is a relatively new uh, organization within IBM, about a year and a half old, I believe, right? Can you give us some idea of the resources that IBM is committing in terms of personnel? Yeah, we absolutely have um, the mobile first organization, but <clears throat> this is pulling through many different organizations, but we have just announced the mobile first studios as well, where we are putting um, consultants, uh, our services personnel, connecting it with our design lab. So uh, we have many, many people involved. It's not just a mobile first organization. Um, so it really reaches into the entire uh, team across the software teams, the uh, services teams, and global technology services, as well as GBS. Meg Swanson was on with us earlier today, and she was talking about how uh, Bluemix is leveraging uh, Meetup as a platform to get developers involved in a one-on-one -on -one basis and get IBMers out there into these meetups. Are you piggybacking onto those efforts? Absolutely, Meg and I are working hand in hand on those meetups. So we were talking to Dave earlier towards the end of the segment with the remaining time, we'll talk about digital marketing because that's a big part of big data right now. And we were talking prior about some of the things. How do you, as a marketer with mobile out there, the connected consumers, clearly a new variable in the marketing mix, you know, and so, how does that change your job? I mean, as a, as a marketer, uh, as an IBM executive, as someone who's been in the business before, there's a before and after movie that's going on here, right? We're in the really first generation of yeah. consumers that are fully connected to the net where you can do a lot of cool things with them. What are do a lot of cool things, um, but it's absolutely about understanding the information and putting the information in context. Uh, many people think about marketing changing in terms of how do you drive campaigns, and where do you do media buys, but I think it goes much, much beyond that. Um, at Mobile World Congress this year, it was even about understanding on the floor, designing a ped, and how do you in real time change that content that you have on the show floor. Um, and we were doing this through mobile apps, right? We had many, many walls going on of information. We were watching what was trending, and then we were pushing new content out on the spot through a mobile app sitting mm -hmm. in, the, in the pad. So it's not just the campaigns, it's really the um, integrated loop uh, around content and getting content in motion. You've built engagement native into the experience. Yeah. That's what you're basically saying. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Music to our ears, you know how we feel, Paul, about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Paul and I geeked about social yesterday with the Sandy Carter, and uh, we love it, so. Yeah. You, you see a lot of apps from a lot of developers. What's something really cool you've seen lately? I'm a marketing person, and I, I, what I thought was cool was when we were at Mobile World Congress and we were uh, changing things on the sides of bus stops in real time about because of things that were trending inside the, con the, the conference itself, um, all, like I said, through a no mobile device in real time. We didn't have to go and wait and do yeah. the assessment, call back to home, but I think that is absolutely amazing. People are walking around getting the information as they need it. Do you see near, is that a near-field communication type of, of app? Is that what you were using? Uh, the, so you're wirelessly yeah. sending transmissions to the physical ad unit yeah. based upon the contextual data yeah. from the behavior of the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't resist. And imagine That's doing so that good. on a one-to-one -one basis, yeah. on a personal yeah. basis yeah. in yeah. the retail or, yeah. environment. Or in yeah. groups, and you know, like we're doing crowd chat. I mean, this is the future. I mean, this is about tailoring the personalization. Marissa Mayer at Yahoo is all about personalization. Um, and that's ultimately the end game, right? I mean, if you, can, if you know what people want, you could actually create a better experience. Absolutely. Um, Kristen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Any final words for the folks out there about why uh, impact, what's going on at impact, what's the big theme that you'd like to share with folks? I think impact is really about bringing together cloud, mobile, social, big data, and understanding these shifts in the marketplace. And I don't think there's any other company out there that's going to understand the ecosystem as well as all the technology and how that's going to make a difference in the marketplace. That's what impact's all about. Couldn't have said it better, that was awesome. Well done, this is theCUBE, here at IBM Impact Live. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.